Guys, you see this book? It is officially a bestseller. Make sure you log on to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or wherever you get your favorite book. Get your copy of my new bestseller, The Love Languages of Food. More recipes to come. You guys stay tuned. All right, so today we're gonna be making grandma's pound cake with a little bit of a twist. Um, so starting off with some melted butter, we've got some cake flour, we've got some eggs, we've got some flavoring, some sugar, and then some uh, rum cream as well. So we're gonna start incorporating all of these ingredients. Start off with putting in the butter into our mixer. Glad to turn that into a low speed. And now we're really gonna do this so that the butter starts to green. And as we mix in the sugar, was what we call creaming the butter. My grandmother would make this cake all the time. And I remember her showing me at least four or five times how to make this. And it took me all of those times to learn how to make it. And each time that we made it, I realized that it would always like have some level of flavor that was different, right? There was almost like a level of bimani where there is, you know, salty or sweet. They always had these amazing flavors and I'll pick up on it every time, but we take this. So now we're gonna fold in for a flavor. Here I have rum flavoring, vanilla flavoring, some lemon extract, some almond extract as well, all combined into one. We got all of our white ingredients in there. And we're added to this rum cream as well. Don't tell grandma I did this. Food curry. Now, we're gonna incorporate some of this cake flour. Not all of it, just some of it. Now, we're adding some of the eggs. So we're folding this thin and really all folding is, is just we're incorporating it. Of course, slowly incorporating these ingredients a little bit at a time. Very easy to have this to be a, a very flower-like texture. You want it to be a very seedy section. So this is one of our, one of our family recipes, right? This is my grandmother's recipe and you know, family is so big for us. Any major family function that we have, Bermuda's always making pound cake. He's always cooking all the time. Family was big um, for me. And, and our family food is one of the main things that keeps us together. And, you know, that we always, um, you know, something that we always do together. We always eat together. We're always cooking together. So family interaction was big for me. One of the main lo lovely windows. Um, that I enjoy. She said, okay, no problem. And so I thought, you know, gradually she would just teach me a couple of things. The very next morning after I asked her to teach me how to cook, she woke me up at like six o'clock in the morning and she was banging on my door and she's like, get up, we're gonna make breakfast. I'm like, at 6 a.m. to like, yeah, we're gonna make breakfast. And first thing I had to make was scrambled eggs. Um, and so it went from us, you know, making scrambled eggs on like a, this small griddle and then after that, we started making pancakes on like an even bigger griddle top. And so I slowly started to evolve in terms of what we were making. We started making French toast. We started making pasta carbonara. Um, every day it was something different that I learned how to cook. Um, and it was just an absolutely amazing experience for me. I was seven years old. I was already going to make, you know, these basic dishes, but they all started, you know, escalating. We started, you know, making things that were gradually more difficult to make. And so I was really a test to my uh, culinary uh, expertise, if you will, at a very early age. And this kind of led me into, you know, what could be the texture. The texture is nice, it's thick, has a lot of bounce to it. That's from the eggs. If you can look at it, you can see how fluffy it is. Those egg lice, those egg yolks, make it very nice and airy and fluffy. Put it with sphere. You would just tell how smooth and creamy it is from creaming that butter and sugar together. Not grainy. It's just very fluffy, very airy.
big so that it's even on the sides as well. So while I'm doing this, I have my oven preheated at 350 degrees. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that it's pre cleaned cold with girl. And uh, we put it into the oven. We don't want to put this cake into a cold oven. It's not going to rise our place out of a cook properly. It's going to cook very uneven and it's just, it's not going to be a good experience. Make sure your oven is preheated. All right. So now we're going to give this little, sh little shake, little jiggle. That down a couple of times. So this is nice and even, but I'm gonna let this rest for about two minutes before I put it in the oven. I'm gonna let everything settle and I uh, get well incorporated. Get to the chili. Set. <laughs> I've got my oven set at 350 degrees. We're gonna cook it for roughly about 50 minutes or so. But we're gonna check it in about 35 minutes. So on a semi silent 35 minutes. And we're gonna check it then, and we're probably gonna let it cook for about another 10, 15 minutes or so. We're gonna check it at 35 minutes, make sure nothing funky is going on. So cake is ready. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take it out of the oven and make sure we did this thing right. God, it looks beautiful. It smells so amazing in here. I wish you guys could smell how good it smells in here. We're gonna flip this right over. I'm sure it's in it. See if it comes out right. Look at that. Came out beautiful. And what I like to do is, I like to dust this with some powdered sugar. We're gonna make this look nice and pretty. Sip some of that powdered sugar in there. Strawberries, some fresh blueberries here. Look at how pretty this looks already. One of the things that I think about when I started making this cake, when I was younger, my grandmother would always make these cakes and to me, it seemed impossible for anybody to be able to replicate it. And then eventually she started teaching me. And then very quickly, I realized that there was a lot that I could learn um, by simply just putting forth the effort, asking questions. And then ultimately I was able to sort of perfect this cake and make it just like my grandmother. And one of the things that made me think about that was my father always told me to never put a cap on my potential. And for a while, I didn't think that I could make the cake as good as my grandmother's still you know not the best right it's still not grandma's it still wasn't made from her hands but it you know made me think about my father's like okay never put a cap on my potential never you know think that you can't achieve something never think that you can't do anything my father's probably my biggest inspiration in terms of me um you know achieving a lot of the things that i've achieved today and ultimately being able to make this beautiful cake just like my grandmother used to make